Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Chatul. I teach biology and biotech at Roosevelt High School and I am a former nurse practitioner and I mention that because we're in a genetics unit and genetics is incredibly important to um, being able to understand and deliver good health care. Um, so I hope you will enjoy this lesson which is going to focus on some critical vocabulary that you're going to need going forward in this genetics unit. So I am going to shrink myself down here and we're going to launch into a little review of some important vocabulary. There are a couple of sheets that you're going to want to have available. Let me show you what they are. So you are going to want to have available this genetics vocabulary worksheet that um, you should have gotten at the very beginning of genetics when we were working with planaria. This hopefully looks familiar to you. If you still have it from then, get it out. If not, you should be able to find a, a copy of this as a 0.0, .0 lesson or worksheet in, at the beginning of the genetics unit. So you want to have this handy because we're going to be focused in right here on lesson 2.2. The other thing you want to have is this um, practice sheet on spirit bears. Okay, so um, again this is available in the Schoology folder and if you could make this available right now that's going to be really helpful because that's part of this lesson. So you want the vocabulary sheet and this worksheet on practicing with spirit bears. Okay, so now we're going to move forward. The goals for this lesson are very straightforward. After you go through this PowerPoint lecture, you're going to be able to define gene and describe how different versions of a gene will result in different proteins. Because this is a really key point that you can think about genes as instructions for making individual proteins. Um, and then we want to be able to describe how different proteins will result in different traits. And that's where the sp spirit bears will um, be a great example to help you see how this works out. Okay, so moving along. Moving along, you want to make sure you have your vocabulary sheet handy. And again, um, this was earlier material when we were studying planaria and development, and now we're going to zoom in here and add some vocabulary. Let's start with the question about genes. What are genes? Okay, so genes are basically regions of a chromosome that are the instructions for building proteins. And then traits are the result of protein function. So looking at an image here, um, what we see is a representation of an individual chromosome. This happens to be human chromosome number seven. It contains 1800 genes and um, each gene is made up of nucleotides, that is the, the A's, the C's, the G's, and the T's. And um, in this particular chromosome, there are 150 million of those nucleotides. Okay, so this is a chromosome, but here we have individual regions, which are genes which encode for these particular proteins. Okay, so genes are sections of chromosomes that tell an organism how to make a specific protein. I like to think about genes like recipes in a cookbook. You have a, you have a cookbook that has all kinds of recipes in it that could be like a chromosome. And then an individual gene is an individual recipe within that cookbook that tells you how to make a specific kind of food, specific kind of uh, 
cookie or soup or bread, whatever it is, that is the, the protein, what you make. Okay, so let's take a look here at the relationship between chromosomes and genes. So we, we're looking here at a chromosome and we have all the individual nucleotides lined up here. And this specific region is a gene. And we can take a close look at that particular gene. And so we see a, a gene is really not a scary thing. It's, it's just a sequence of nucleotides that are the directions for making a particular protein. Okay, now um, here is a gene and here is the protein that is going to be made by the cell following the directions here in this particular gene. And we have version one of this protein. Now let's take a look and see what happens if there's a slightly different version of the gene. Okay. Um, sorry, this is a functional protein. Now let's take a look and see what happens if we have a little variant here on the gene. So if we, if we look right here in this region, here we have an A and a T, base pairing rules, A pairs with T, and in this version of the gene, we now have a C and a G, because C's pair with G. But this is different. Everything else is the same. If you look through here, all the other nucleotides are the same, but there's a difference here. Now this difference is a different recipe. The protein is different. And in this case, this change results in a non-functional protein because the protein has a different shape. And shape is everything when it comes to protein function. Now let's come back to your vocabulary sheet, which is this one and um, you should be able to label a gene in this chromosome which again is just a region there's a number of genes per chromosome so indicate one of these areas as a gene and a gene is in, uh, instructions for making a protein um, and since we're here we can talk about the fact that since there can be variants in genes we call those alleles. So when there's that little bit of difference between one version of the gene and another, that's what is that's what an allele is. I like to think about it um, like ice cream. Everybody knows that ice cream comes in a variety of flavors. So let's say you have this ice cream gene, and I could say to you, but which which allele are we talking about? Are we talking about the chocolate? or the raspberry, or the pistachio, or whatever. What, what flavor? That's similar to what an allele is. And then you can also answer what makes a protein functional versus non-functional. That comes down to the shape of the protein. When a protein is made, it starts out as a string of amino acids that has to be folded up into exactly the right shape and that's there are there are um, parts of a cell and that is, that's the responsibility of those parts of the cell to make sure proteins get folded up correctly if they are folded correctly they're functional if they haven't been folded up correctly if they have a little change in them in their amino acid uh, sequence or order it will fold up differently and they could very well be non-functional. Okay, so now we have finished adding in some vocabulary to this sheet. As you can see, in other lessons you'll be going over some of these other vocabulary lessons, but for today that's all we're focusing on. Now we're going to look at the spirit bear example. Okay, now let's 
put into practice some of the things that we have learned and use the vocabulary. Okay, so here is your, your sheet that you should have out, the practice of, of uh, looking at this example of what are called spirit bears. So up in BC, Canada, um, there's bears that are, that are found up there that are called ghost bears or spirit bears because they have this white coloration. They are genetically identical to the black bears but their color is different. So in this practice, we're gonna ask you to see if you can um, use your knowledge about genes and variations in genes resulting in variations in proteins to explain this variation in pigment. Okay, so what are you gonna do? You're going to start by um, drawing molecular models here. And um, so you're going to draw the black bear versus the white or the spirit bear. And you want to make sure you draw a skin cell because that's where this pigment matters. And within the cell, label the cell membrane, the nucleus, the protein, and the enzymes. Then do your best to write out an explanation for this difference in pigment. Try to make it three sentences, um, writing an explanation for the relationship between the trait of each bear and the activity of the proteins. So include an explanation of the relationship between the structure and function of any associated proteins. So pause right here and take your time and do your best to draw models and then write out an explanation. And then I will go over the key or the answer to this. But first pause and do your own work. Okay, we're back and so once again, this is just a quick review about your, your worksheet and the fact that um, we have this, these, these two bears and we're going to try to explain why they have a, a different pigment, one being white, one being black. We have uh, the model of the cell, which we want to label, okay? And then you're going to have your explanation for this difference in color. Now we're going to go ahead and look at um, that answer. Okay, so now let's zero in on what's going on here in the skin cells of these two different bears. So let's we're going to start with the uh, black bear version first, and we take a look at a skin cell, and we're down here in the nucleus, and we see there's some chromosomes, and right here on this chromosome is a gene and this gene codes or has the directions for making a enzyme right here is the, the enzyme that is encoded for by this gene. And the, the job of this enzyme, and remember enzymes are proteins, this enzyme's job is to convert this colorless molecule here into a black pigment. And when all of this, this is going on in all of the skin cells of this bear. So all of these cells are doing the same thing. They have a particular gene that encodes for this enzyme. This enzyme's job is to convert a colorless molecule into a black molecule. This is going on in almost all the cells. That's why the bear is black. Okay. Now, what is going on over here in the skin cells of the spirit bear? Okay, so we said that they're genetically identical, which means if we look inside the cell and inside the nucleus, and here's this chromosome, and here is the gene for the same enzyme, except this allele is different from the allele over here for the same gene. So we have this one labeled A1 and this one labeled A2. 
And now what happens? A different protein is made. It's shaped differently. And as a result, it's not functional. And these colorless molecules are not converted to black pigment as they are over here. And therefore, the bear is white. OK, so that's the answer for the practice problem. And that helps put together the big ideas about what genes are, what alleles are, and how you get different proteins from different alleles, and how sometimes those proteins might end up being non-functional. We are now at the end of this lesson. So at this point, you should be able to define a gene. You should be able to describe how different versions of a gene will result in different proteins. And you should be able to describe how different proteins will lead to different traits. And what's next? You should make an entry in your learning tracking tool for this lesson, 2.2. And you should check your work on the spirit bears, which we just went over. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Take care and see you next time.